update 1.24.1 1 test server is up and running and I'm inside of it actually as you can see and this one is quite a big patch guys when update 1.24 was uh, actually like it didn't introduce anything new besides the battle pass and maneuvers event which was coming back uh, then this one is quite a massive one one of the main things being of course are the new uh, bullish tank destroyers with new mechanic as well we get to that in a second and uh, if we go over here we can see the full list of things brand new bullish tds vehicle rebalancing map reworking update on cruise 100 efficiency a post mortem mode final season of onslaught which is coming improvements to steel hunter and tour of duty reworking as well and uh, starting off with uh, let's say let's start off with the bullish um, deck three now i'm not going to make a full blown tank review episode over here otherwise it would be 10 hours long and nobody would watch it anyway uh, but uh, if you want to get a little head start then i would recommend uh, start saving experience on 14 dp because this is a tier 4 tank which leads into the first uh, uh, polish tank destroyer uh, zadumka zadumka if i'm not mistaken tier 5 tank over here which uh, quickly let's take a look which looks like that it, <laughs> it looks very uh, slick and clean let me put it that way uh, so this one leads into tier 6 burza sdb uh, 44 burza which looks like that a little bit more beefy but still very slick <coughs> maybe it's going to be even a bit bouncy right over here uh, then into tier 7 govica uh, sorry Go, go, uh, govica govica how should i pronounce that please tell me in the comment section down below if i have any bullish viewers uh, then tier 8 kilana and this is where you're going to see a guy, quite a weird looking barrel ladies and gentlemen because starting from tier 8 those tanks are going to feature a brand new mechanic uh, so kilana over here uh, into tier 9 konkievit SDP 60. Well, I guess we are going to call it SDP 60, guys. S60 or SDP 60, which looks like that. It reminds me um, uh, SU tanks, ISU tanks, a uh, little bit with the shape, like overall the tier 9 and tier 10, right? And uh, this barrel looks even more weird. As you can see, the type of shell looks even more weird. And this tank leads into the uh, cherry on the top of the cake. NC-70 Bluskavica. If I'm not mistaken, guys. This is how you pronounce it. Bluskavica. 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 Uh, something like that. Because I remember there was a ship named like that in World of Four ships. Am I, am I mistaken? And look at this gun, for example. This looks even more weird ladies and gentlemen uh, but uh, full uh, gameplay videos are coming up so you better hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for that because i'm going to show you how those tanks behave and perform now, now talking about this special feature those tanks come with starting from tier 8 uh, the new branches tier 8 to 10 vehicles will have new shell mechanics uh, to deliver maximum damage in close combat scenarios it will consist of two aspects guys uh, star tray shells uh, these are most effective when used to shoot targets at a range of 50 meters or less as the distance increases the loss of kinetic energy leads to a gradual decrease in damage so if you want to get the maximum alpha damage close range if you want to snipe well you simply are not going to deal that much damage now deep rifled guns these guns enable shells to be fired at exceptionally high velocities the sp uh, the sdp 60 and uh, the mc 70 uh, standard shell will travel at 1700 meters per second while their special shell will fly at 2000 meters per second making it the fastest shell in the game guys basically you're able to auto aim anything into the side even when it is moving uh, sideways at full speed guys uh, it is that fast right it is going to be that fast and i believe i would love to test it out as well uh, so stay tuned for this uh, so this is uh, what is coming 
um, from the Bolis Tank Destroyer Deck 3. Next up, let's look at the Vehicle Rebalancing. We are going to get uh, four main tanks which are rebalanced and some lower tier tanks as well leading up to those uh, Panzerkampfwagen 7 uh, AMX 54 HP which uh, uh, this this thing is starting to be quite a beast guys because if we go to no this is not where I want to go uh, dedicated article if we go over here uh, then uh, the Panzer is going to receive uh, the uh, gunmantlet buff as far as I understood right uh, now we are all also removing weak spots on the mantlet. Yes, this is uh, the, the one I wanted to read over here. Aligning it uh, with the VK7201K and enhancing overall survivability because this tank was able to get uh, penetrated into the face by tier 8 tanks actually. Super heavy penned into the strongest part, which should be the strongest part of the tank gun mantlet turret was bent by tier 8, right? On the top of that, it received uh, better accuracy, better aim time, uh, better penetration, and more engine power as well, so might be quite this scary beast. Uh, AMX 54 HP, same about this one. This can be on the borderline, like, too powerful now. I'm going to test it out, so once again, stay tuned for that, guys. Reverse speed buff, uh, power to weight ratio buffed quite a bit over here. Aiming time uh, buffed after firing dispersion <coughs> in motion during hull traverse buff, during gun traverse buff. So basically, um, able to put out that clip damage potential more uh, reliably. And this is uh, what they want to achieve with that. So uh, two vehicles which are getting buffed and the two tanks which are getting nerfed are Super Gonk, which basically, you know, overall it is going to play exactly the same, right? It's going to play exactly the same, just a little bit less DPM and 100 less hit points as well. And uh, Minotauro, however, a frontal hatch armor, guys. This is the hatch in the very front, which they made 70 millimeters weaker. So uh, this will be penetrated by tier 10s, uh, especially with uh, premium rounds. Uh, standard rounds, when it is hulled down, are still going to struggle, but premium will eat through that, um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, minus 100 less hit points, uh, dispersion during hull, uh, traverse made worse, but still it is better than on average. This 0.15 is still better than on average. Uh, heat shield velocity nerfed as well, uh, specific power made better, however, together with uh, traverse speed. Uh, so those are the vehicle buffs and nerfs. Uh, mountain boss, uh, moving on. Um, let me know what you think about the vehicle rebalancing. Uh, moving on, Mountain Boss is going to receive a, another rework, by the way. They're going to make this base, like, they're completely going to transform this uh, base, basically. You know, those bushes where the bushes were, uh, this side was able to defend and win unbelievable, unwinnable battles sometimes. You put one or two guys up the hill and one guy who is sniping over there and you, like, enemy team didn't know what to do. Like, if you go up the hill, the guy in the bushes uh, can snipe you to death and if you go after this guy in the bushes, two guys or one guy up on the hill could snipe you to death and easily eat you alive. So what they're going to do is, <coughs> they're going to take a little trimmer and they are going to remove all the trees over here. Or they are going to take the chainsaw, right? Mo motor saw. And uh, a lot less uh, bushes and the terrain will be different as well. Uh, better sniping opportunities over here on the other side, defending the base. And there were actually a couple other changes. I wonder uh, what happened to those. Uh, on Karelia, was some terrain improvements over here. This is the northern base, if I'm not mistaken. Bigger rock has been added. This is the middle of the map. This position made less arty cover, less arty shadow, made lower. I guess this is just against arties, actually. Because regular tanks are still not able to shoot through that. Maybe you're actually able to drive up here. Hmm. Interesting. Mines. A little bit more room to push that uh, corner of the map, the northeast part of the map, from this side. Easier, easier to push. More, more room to push, basically. And uh, some bushes have been removed, so this position is not going to be as powerful anymore. You're not able to sit over here and snipe into the enemy base or into the side of the enemy heavies. Right? More bushes added. Actually, not more bushes added, but better bushes 
added next to the rock. <coughs> Easier to snipe from the base. This is just straight out um, favoring camping, sniping on such a small map. Hmm. Not sure what I think about this, actually. Not sure what I think about that. Uh, update on cruise. 100% efficiency. Okay, let's uh, go into the game and let's talk about the crew now. This is the screen that actually welcomed me into the test server as well. All crew members are now trained to 100%. No 75, 80, 85, 90% crew members. <coughs> and now each crew member's base major qualification level is 100%. Values above 100% are treated as a crew efficiency bonus. Uh, this parameter can still be increased using consumables, equipment and crew perks, you know, uh, food, uh, ventilation, brothers in arms, and decreased in battle if a crew member is injured. All crew XP needed to train a, a crew member to 100% has been added to the XP of their most recently trained perk. Uh, recruiting a new 100% crew member is now free. Uh, recruiting them using in-game currency means their first perk can be trained faster. A crew member's qualification can now be changed for free during retraining. Perks are not reset, like Commander into Radio Operator, for example. The price of retraining remains the same. Uh, there is no additional penalty to XP when retraining crew from vehicles of different type. Uh, the penalty is now applied upon changing qualification. All right. Uh, perk efficiency of each member is 100% by default. It has linear progression and contains 100,000 crew XP. Uh, when crew XP is lost upon retraining, it is deducted from perk efficiency, which reduces the efficiency of all perks trained by the crew member. Uh, crew XP earned in a battle first goes towards restoring perk efficiency to 100% and then towards training new perks. Basically, like at first, uh, uh, you know, getting the commander or your crew members up to 100% uh, qualification and then you started working, working on the uh, perks once again. So they just uh, did it the other way around, right? Uh, crew members uh, whose first perk is not trained to 100% can now retrain for other vehicles for free without losing XP. Uh, those uh, whose second perk is not trained to 100% receive a 50% discount on doing so. Crew members who are not trained to operate a specific vehicle cannot use their perks when operating that vehicle, but their efficiency is still 100%. Uh, if a crew member is trained to operate a specific vehicle, they are also considered trained to operate all premium and and reward vehicles of the same type and same nation. Uh, so this is uh, what is coming up with uh, the crew members. As you can see, there is no uh, uh, efficiency numbers uh, or the 100% uh, number on the crew member anymore, only perk numbers. And if we click on that guy, for example, this is what we can see as well. Uh, perk efficiency and overall, we're, we're going to see overall efficiency of the uh, crew members. Do, 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 do. Well, total bonus 15%, uh, as you can see, this is what I wanted to see actually uh, from this uh, page as well but I did not see that anyway hovering over this you can see PIA gives extra 5% uh, case of cola gives extra 10% so total bonus 15% totaling to 115% of efficiency basically on that guy Oliver Timms for example and now talking about the barracks cleanup what they mentioned in their roadmap video as well they want to get rid of all those uh, type of crew members which uh, has uh, or which were 100% qualification for example but they did not have first skill fully trained yet for example all those guys who are at 83% for example uh, or 53% for example all those guys uh, will be converted into crew books and uh, this button over here at the bottom uh, in the middle conversion of un. Uh, under trained sorry crew members will be available for 89 days or 90 days and uh, conversion right over here if i click this i am for example going to get rid of uh, 715 crew members crew members to convert if i click that i'm going to see this page right over here as you can see all those guys which i talked about right affirmative and uh, i am going to get uh, 57 training manuals uh, here are nation 
nationwide as well. Uh, 57 uh, big training manuals, uh, then tra six training guides, and then training booklets, uh, 33 of those as well. And boom, just like that, I got uh, rid of all those uh, uh, useless uh, crew members, uh, for example. Uh, which uh, were under trained, right? And if we go under the group books, uh, those should be over here. Yes, indeed. Uh, let me actually pick a different tank to showcase where I have dedicated crew signed to. Let's take this, uh, you know, let's take this D20. Let's go to crew books and this is what we got. Like I got uh, quite a bunch of those 250k uh, training manuals for USA, for example. But uh, as far as I know, the only guys who do not even have the first skill trained, uh, the, the guys who are going to be converted are the ones which are not in a vehicle. For example, this guy uh, should hit the parameters as well, right? Uh, 83%. But because it is inside a tank, then it will be uh, uh, unconverted. If I would, uh, let's see, let's take, uh, let's, let, let's actually do this for a, for a second. Let me... Uh, sent to barracks. Let's see if I'm going to do that. If I'm going to send this guy to barracks as well. Let's go to the barracks. Can I still clean up the barracks now or not? Not anymore, actually. I can't clean those guys up anymore. So, all in all, over here they say in the barracks you will find a new button that lets you remove all tankers with less than 100% XP for their first perk. But... What I saw was that I had uh, crew members on the vehicles, <coughs> which did not get converted. So, I guess they forgot to mention that they were here, uh, which uh, were under 100% on their first perk, basically. So, Or am I misunderstanding something over here? It is quite confusing, but I'm trying to keep up to... Uh, up to date as much as possible. You will receive compensation for their XP in the form of crew books. So this is what we saw after we clicked the button, right? Uh, so let me know what you think about the crew uh, rework over here or just a little bit of a barracks cleanup basically and the new efficiency system. I would say it's more clear to understand the overall once we get used to it. Next up, let's talk about post-mortem mode. While update 1.24.1 will introduce post-mortem mode, uh, battles on maps with random events will not be supported initially. Last moment support will be added soon. Uh, so this is not over here. Basically, the last moment is provides details of the shot that destroyed your vehicle. The mode that actually was uh, quite popular in the game many, many years ago is coming as well into this uh, game. Whenever you get destroyed by a tank that uh, your team sees or is visible, you are going to get information how the angle and where exactly the shot landed, basically. And um, this is what the last moment should be but it is not uh, on the desk server yet. Now, Observer Camera, an improved version of free camera you already know from Frontline. It will only be available in non-competitive mode, uh, so as not uh, to give an unfair advantage, guys. So this is basically, if you have played uh, uh, Frontline, if you die, you're able to start flying around, which is kind of a cool way to observe the battle, I would say so, if you still want to see the action. Like, that, that, I can already see how, you know, some battles during streams or videos, uh, which I want to follow through, this is, this is cool, actually. It's nothing, you know, that affects the gameplay at all, but it's, you know, kind of cool feature for content, let's say. A last moment offers detailed and short versions, allowing you to tailor the amount of information you receive. Okay, um, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, with the new last moment and the improved observer camera, the post mortem mode updates uh, will provide invaluable insights. Uh, you will become a better tanker by understanding where the enemy was positioned, the shell used, and its trajectory, and how it penetrated your vehicle. Exactly what I said, guys. Uh, so, yeah. It will make you better tanker if you actually look at it and learn from it. Not only, ah, shit, that guy was so lucky, RNG, goddamn, got me once again. So, yeah, uh, get ready for the final season of Onslaught, which is coming as well this season. And, uh, you know, people are able to get the exclusive Hurricane Tierton Medium Tank. Well, this is basically a skinned CS-63. 
additional season of the Jade Pegasus will introduce a new piece of improved equipment, innovative targeting. It will be available for a purchase for the first time in the game once you reach the bronze rank. Innovative targeting? What the hell is that? Is this Bond improved aiming? Guys. Guys. Can I make videos of new, brand new, most accurate tanks in the game? If it is that. Innovative targeting. Anyway. Uh, training rooms uh, featuring onslaught maps. Oh. Uh, fresh customization rewards. Including uh, cool new camos and inscriptions. You will also now earn more base uh, rating points at the other rank for your performance. Oh, nice. That's good. That's good. That's good. What else do we have over here? Improvements to Steel Hunter. This will this launch will enhance platooning functionality, making it easier to find a random platoon mate. Simply press a button. Okay, so basically uh, making friends will be easier. Finally, you will be able to add your random platoon partner to a permanent platoon. Wait, what? Additionally, the mode will have a voice activated communication. Simply press a button and someone else see Ah, okay. I thought you were able to form platoons in the solo games for a second. All right. Uh, Tour of Duty reworking. This is for uh, clan people. Uh, more daily missions. Three total missions. Sequential completion. Team up for the last two missions. Manual reward collection. The final two missions must be completed in a platoon or detachment with a clanmate. Okay. Uh, rewards. Industrial resources for a clan. Points of uh, duty, a new clan currency, unlock region using points of duty on the map and receive rewards for each region at the end of your battle journey. Await the ultimate prize. Carro de combatimento? Whoa, at the end of tour of duty rewards. Damn, that's actually big. If I go into the game under clan, regions explored. Basically, you are building a thing. Button one, button two. Okay, well, this is just uh, still in beta, right? This is like a little mini campaign over here. This might make uh, more players join clans, actually, guys. This actually might do that. All right, I need to. I need to look a bit deeper into that. I do not want to give any, you know, half-assed, uh, assed opinions over here. Uh, so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's it, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Update. The main things uh, about Update 1.24.1 covered in today's video. Quite a big one. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comment section down below. Where is this? I'm going to finish with this tank on the screen. And stay tuned for this gameplay action. Bluskavitsia. Bluskavitsia. Pluskavitsia, Pluskavitsia, Pluskavitsia. I butchered it. Love you all. Stay cool. Bye bye.